Hi guys. Oh, I'm having a really bad hair day today. But anyhow, c'est la vie. So take a look at our far side cartoon. Something about to do with ecology at least. And our goal is analyze how population size is determined by births, deaths, deaths, immigration, emigration, and limiting factors like biotic and abiotic that determine the carrying capacity. Our objectives are to describe the study of biology, explain how biotic and abiotic factors influence an ecosystem, and then describe the methods used to study ecology. So think about it. Ecology's roots are, are in our basic human interest in observing other organisms. Naturalists, including Aristotle, Aristotle and Darwin, have long studied the living world and systematically recorded their observations. However, Modern ecology involves more than observation. It's a very rigorous experimental science that generates hypotheses, manipulates environmental variables, and observes the outcome. So let's look at our first objective here. The first one is to describe the study of ecology. So the biosphere, the Earth, consists of all life on Earth and all parts of the Earth in which life, in which life exists including the land, the water, and the atmosphere. The biosphere extends from about 8 kilometers above the Earth's surface to as far as 11 kilometers below the surface of the ocean. Ecology is the study of interactions among and between organisms and their physical environment. Interactions within the biosphere produce a web of interdependence between organisms and the environments in which they live. Organisms respond to their environments and can change their environments, producing an ever-changing biosphere. Economics is concerned with interactions based on money, and economics and ecology, if you haven't noticed, share the same root word. Indeed, human economics and ecology are linked. Humans live within the, bi live it, live within the biosphere and depend on ecological processes to provide such essentials to us as food and drinkable water that can be bought and sold for money. There are many levels of organization that ecologists study, and they are the following. First you have the species, which is like an individual organism. And then you go to the population. It's a group of individuals that belong to the same species and live in the same area. Next is the community which is an assemblage of different populations that live together in defined area. And then finally, ecosystems, all the organisms that live in a place together within their physical environment. Next, we move on to biome, a group of ecosystems that share similar climates and typical organisms. And then finally, the biosphere, like I said before, our entire planet with all its organisms and physical environments. So let's review objective one, that was to describe the study of ecology. And to do that, we have our answer. Ecology is a scientific study of interactions among organisms and between organisms and their physical environment. Objective two, explain how biotic and abiotic factors influence an ecosystem. But first of all, what are they? A biotic factor is any living part of the environment in which an organism might interact including animals, plants, mushrooms, and bacteria, all of it. An abiotic factor is any non-living part of the environment, such as sunlight, heat, precipitation, humidity, wind or water currents, soil type, nutrients, which influence the distribution and abundance of the organisms. For example, a dead log or a stone can shelter organisms such as a salamander, worms, and insects, buffering them from the extremes of temperature and moisture. So objective two is explain how biotic and abiotic factors influence an ecosystem. And the answer is abiotic factors are non-living factors that influence the distribution and abundance of organisms, and biotic factors are living factors that also influence the distribution and abundance of life on Earth. Moving on to our quick lesson today is objective three. Describe the methods used to study ecology. They are observation. It's the first step in asking ecological questions. Questions may form the first step 
in the designing experiments and models as we've discussed before in chapter one. Experimentation. Experiments can be used to test hypotheses. An ecologist may set up an artificial environment in a laboratory or greenhouse and carefully alter conditions in selected parts of natural ecosystems. Of course, many eco ecological events occur over such long periods of time, over such large distances, that they are very difficult to study directly. So what do ecologists do? They make models to help understand these phenomena. So our objective three was to describe the methods used to study ecology. So regardless of their tools, modern ecologists use three methods in their work observation, experimentation, and modeling. Each of these pro approaches rely on scientific methodology to guide inquiry. So let's finish up our quick chapter here, our quick lesson I should say. It's describe the study of ecology, as our objectives, explain how biotic and abiotic factors influence the ecosystem, and describe the methods used to study ecology. Quick and easy, and here's our cute picture for today.